Okay, here is the video lecture number one on social stratification for Scott High School. Um, chapter, uh, excuse me, chapter 10 in your textbook if you have the recent uh, version of the book. If you have a, an older edition, uh, just find the chapter on social stratification. Now by definition, you want to kind of write this down in your notes as you're taking notes with this. Social stratification simply refers to structured inequality. I'm going to start making the case to you that the inequalities that we witness in this country uh, in terms of um, income, wealth, status, uh, whatever the case may be, is very structured. There's a, there's a systematic process in place that determines who gets what and how much of what. So again, social stratification, by definition, is structured inequality. Now, we can look at uh, social stratification um, in terms of income and wealth here initially, and that's what we'll do. Income refers to earnings from work investments. Uh, if you go to jobs, some of you have part-time jobs, I don't know, maybe even a full-time job. Uh, any money that you make, your paycheck that you bring home, that you put in the bank, is income. Uh, to give you an idea, the U.S. median family income in 2008 was $61,521. So that's, you know, both people, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, whoever, working together. Um, wealth, on the other hand, is the total value of money and other assets minus outstanding debts. I'm going to give you some examples of income and, and some examples of wealth in the next few slides. In the United States, 1% of the population possesses 35% of the nation's private resources. Now think about that for a minute. 1% of the U.S. population, that's a very tiny portion of our, of our country's population, controls 35% of the nation's private resources. So the very few at the very top of the class structure own, control, possess most of the wealth in this country. And some people say that's a real problem. Uh, other people say, well, no, that's how America is. You know. Now, income can range from business wages, like we talked about, any money that you earn on, on the job, uh, rent, investments that you make, <coughs> any kind of, excuse me, money that you get from investments, royalties, um, if you're going to be like a rapper, like I'm going to be, just kidding, you know, if you're going to be like a, you know, like mus musicians, athletes, any kind of you know, any kind of advertisements that they do, the music that that musicians produce, um, if it's played on a commercial, uh, they get a royalty. They get money from that uh, every time that it's aired. Interest, alimony, uh, allowances. If you ever had an allowance as a child, that counts as income. Gambling. Uh, technically, in this country, we're supposed to report our gambling earnings as income. I know a lot of people probably don't. So those are all examples of income. Now, wealth, on the other hand, isn't what you're bringing in, but it's what you're worth. Uh, property, anything that is property um, can be considered wealth. Buildings, you know, the house that you live in is worth something. The land that your parents own is worth something. Animals, machinery, cars, stocks, bonds, uh, bank accounts, furniture. So anything that is worth something. And some people in society are not very wealthy. Others are incredibly wealthy. And then we have everybody and everywhere in between. Um, your book talks about some other aspects of social stratification. Um, occupational prestige. Uh, now, social prestige, if something is prestigious, that means that it is important, that it is held in high regard. So social prestige, by definition, refers to importance, regard, or respect. And the way that occupations tend to work within our culture, within our country, white-collar jobs tend to bring higher prestige and higher salaries. For example, you know, doctors, lawyers, managers, uh, essentially people who wear white dress shirts, if you will, that, thus white collar, tend to be given more status and more prestige. They tend to command higher incomes. And people within our society tend to, uh, to think that those jobs are more important than, say, blue collar jobs. When you think of blue collar jobs, you think of people who are working jobs with maybe a uniform with their name on it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, auto mechanics, uh, janitors, or sanitary technicians, um, you know, people who work in factories, um, even you know, maybe people who work, you know, who work at Walmart to some extent. Uh, blue collar jobs tend to bring lower prestige and also lower salaries. We tend to think, well, these jobs aren't as important, you know, so we're not going to pay people as much as we would doctors and lawyers. So that's how social prestige works in terms of occupation in this country. I think your textbook, maybe, I might be wrong, but I think 
there's a chart somewhere in your book that talks about occupational prestige and we may actually revisit that at some point now sometimes we have status inconsistency sometimes not often but sometimes prestige and income are not positively correlated um, example sometimes there are jobs that offer low prestige or low status but pay higher incomes and I can give you some examples of that uh, plumbers for example uh, strippers servers in other words waiters or waitresses a lot of times as a society we tend to kind of look down on these professions and think eh, well you know who wants to be a plumber who wants to do that you know or as parents you know we think you know we want our daughters to be to be strippers you know, probably not I'm, I'm guessing uh, servers waiters waitresses we tend to think that these are sort of you know menial jobs and you know they're just they're just not that prestigious now conversely sometimes there are some occupations that offer high status or high prestige but bring lower incomes uh, such as ministers teachers sociologists for example and I always tell a story you know when there was career day at the high school there weren't a lot of people lining up to be a plumber or wanting to be a plumber um, this is my token picture of, of a plumber very low uh, prestige offered plumbers uh, one day I had a problem at my home I, and I'm not smart enough to fix my own plumbing so this guy called him he came out he represented a company and he was there a couple hours he fixed my problem uh, he did a lot of dirty work and he fixed my problem and I was very grateful and then I was writing a check for like three or four hundred dollars I'm thinking golly so I asked him I said you know no, no offense you know I just I'm just curious how much do you make in a year and he kinda looked at me and smiled he said well you, you may not believe it and I'm sitting here with my you know with my four degrees and you know, being a psychologist and, and a sociologist and a teacher and he says I you know on a good year if things go well I can make about two hundred two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year I'm like, well, okay, um, that's a lot of money. That's a classic example there of someone or an occupation with low status or low prestige but high income. He was doing very well, making more than some doctors and some lawyers. Another story that I like to tell is a true story. Uh, one of the first years that I ever taught in higher education, um, I had a student, and she was in my introduction to sociology class, and she was coming to campus at State, West Virginia State, and I, I knew that she was a little younger, and she was just starting off in school, but she was driving a Lexus. She had the nicest clothes of anyone that I that I ever that I ever knew in my life. I just I, I couldn't believe it, and I didn't want to get real personal. And you know, one day I just I just asked her after class. I said, "Yes, yeah, you have a really nice car and you have some nice clothing." I said, and she was a social work major. And social workers, unfortunately, you know, if you aspire to that, you're not going to make a lot of money. And she disclosed. I had no idea that she was a stripper. Had no clue. And she disclosed to the class that, that she was a stripper. So she was very open about it. She didn't care to talk about it. And, of course, I felt a little awkward after I'd asked the question sort of informally after class. And everybody kind of you know perked up when she said stripper. And I'm like, oh, okay. So she talked about it. And um, and I asked her, I said, well, you know, since, since you brought it up, so again, the sociologist in me is curious. How much do you make, say, in a week or a month? You know, just morbid to curiosity. And she said, well, you know, I, I work, you know, Friday night, Saturday night, and maybe like a Sunday. She called it a matinee, <laughs> so I, I guess she, I don't know, maybe she worked Sunday night, I don't know, or during the day. And she said she would travel to different locations, not just in West Virginia, but would, would go different places and perform, let's call it. And she said that, you know, when you tallied it all up, she was making, you know, and this was as a college freshman, okay, with no education, was working about 20 hours a week, maybe 20 hours a week, and she was making almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. So again, low status. We don't typically think of strippers as being you know high status occupations, but making a lot of money. Uh, servers. I still wait tables. Um, I make a lot of money doing that, even though I have you know, I have four degrees. And I'll go back to the restaurant it's called Deals in Nitro. If you're ever in Nitro, I, I might be working there some. Um, People will say to me, Brandon, why are you work? Why are you waiting tables again? Why are you back here, working on a Friday night when you have four degrees and you're teaching? Well, a, I like it. It's, it's fun for me. But b, I make more money on the hour waiting tables than I do sometimes with my with my degrees that I with my jobs uh, that I have with my degrees. So again, sometimes you get high income but low status, and it can also go the other way. We we tend to afford. A lot of status to, for the most part, 
to preachers, ministers, educators, teachers, um, and a lot of times we don't pay them a lot of money. We don't pay them what they're worth, for sure. Um, so it can kind of work that way as well. So those are some examples of status inconsistency. I'm going to go ahead and call that the end of this first part. Thing.